Most large animals on this planet have the potential to be dangerous and even deadly. Even though we view some animals as being very peaceful and very calm, they are more than capable of defending themselves against predators, and they're also very good at defending themselves against humans as well. Most large animals come from very competitive ecosystems, and these ecosystems are usually home to apex predators. To be able to survive in these ecosystems, you need to be able to fend off these predators, and this means that even relatively calm prey animals can become killers. In most cases, if you leave a large peaceful animal alone, it will leave you alone. However, if you attempt to corner or harass a large animal, the outcome can be deadly. This is why it's never a good idea to try and take a selfie with a wild animal, and the best way to appreciate a wild animal is from afar. In this video I will be going through just a few stories where large animals have fought back against humans, as I will be going through three peaceful animals that have become killers. And for our first species we will be heading to the colder waters of the northern hemisphere, as we have the walrus. The walrus is one of the largest pinnipeds in the world, and it is the only member in its genus. This species has been subdivided into two subspecies, one of them that lives in the Atlantic Ocean, and one of them that lives in the Pacific Ocean. Both these subspecies are a similar size, and males can measure up to 3.6 meters long and weigh over 1.5 tons. To get to this size, they have a pretty meaty diet, and they're mostly bottom feeders feeding on clams, mollusks, and crustaceans. Because they do feed on these foods, they're rarely found in deep water, and of course they like to haul themselves out of the water onto ice or land to rest. Both male and female walruses have tusks, and these tusks help them to get out of the water, break sea ice, and fend off predators and fight other walruses. Even though walruses reach a very impressive size and have some very impressive weaponry, they still have two natural predators. These predators are both the polar bear and the orca. In the water, there's little that a walrus can do to fight off an orca, but on land, large males are known to fight back against polar bears. For the most part, walruses don't pose any danger to humans, but there have been a few attacks over the years. In Svalbard in 1918, walruses capsized a boat and killed all on board. In 2012, adventurer Eric Boomer was nearly capsized when a walrus came up directly beneath his kayak, and Boomer had to fight off the walrus with his paddle. The most recent attack was in 2016, and it happened in a wildlife park in China. Now China doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to conservation, and it definitely doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to zoos. At the same park where this incident happened in 2012, three tigers were filmed killing and eating a cub as they hadn't been fed. Animals are often kept in cramped conditions in Chinese zoos, and their welfare definitely isn't a priority. In other cases, predators are given live animals to kill, and there seems to be little regulation whatsoever. Poor conditions might be one of the many reasons why a walrus attacked a tourist in 2016, and the walrus did this by dragging the tourist into the water. After seeing this, a zookeeper jumped in the water to try and help, but the zookeeper was drowned by the walrus as well. Witnesses say that the tourist was trying to take selfies with the walrus, and the walrus was acting in a play-like manner. When large captive marine mammals do kill humans, it never seems to be in an aggressive way. When Tilikum the orca killed humans, it seemed as though he was almost playing, and for the most part it didn't seem to be an aggressive act. Along the outside of this walrus's enclosure there were no guardrails, and even after the incident there are still no guardrails. I think it's safe to say that this incident wouldn't have happened if it was a wild walrus, but as this walrus was captive and it got used to humans, the outcome always had a chance of being deadly. So even though the walrus is a very beautiful and unique creature, it definitely shouldn't be kept in captivity and you definitely shouldn't try and take a selfie with one. But for our next story, we will be heading to South America, as we have the South American tapir. Now this animal's name is quite a misleading one, as it's not the only tapir in South America. The Central American tapir and the mountain tapir are also found in South America, but the Malayan tapir of Asia is the largest tapir. Tapirs have changed very little over the past 20 million years, and I think it's safe to say that their appearance is quite strange. They have an elephant-like appendage and they look quite a lot like a large pig, but their closest relatives are rhinos and horses. A South American tapir is the largest surviving native terrestrial mammal in the Amazon, and it's quite the iconic creature. Even though the adults tend to be quite bland, the young are far from it, as they tend to have a dappled and striped coloration. Of course this helps them to blend in with the undergrowth, and helps to keep them safe from predators. 
As the South American tapir is so large, it has very few natural predators, but they are sometimes taken out by large crocodilians and jaguars. This species is a herbivore and mostly feeds on fruits, grasses and aquatic plants, and its strange appendage helps it to rip leaves from trees. Even though this species mostly relies on camouflage for protection, it can become very aggressive if it needs to. This is exactly what happened in 2005 in Brazil, when a farmer decided to have a fight with a tapir. A South American tapir had wandered onto a farm to eat some corn, when the farmer decided to do something about it. The 55-year-old farmer grabbed the animal and stabbed it, at which point the tapir turned round and attacked. The tapir repeatedly bit the farmer, and this resulted in fatal injuries. The tapir inflicted at least three deep bites, and these bites caused severe lesions and a fatal hemorrhage. Unfortunately, the tapir wasn't so lucky either, as it was later found dead in a ditch and had died from its injuries. I think this just goes to show you shouldn't mess with a wild animal even if it seems docile, and the South American tapir has quite an impressive bite. But for our next species, we will be heading over to Central Asia, as we have the Bactrian camel. Now, the Bactrian camel is quite a strange animal, and there are actually two species. The domesticated Bactrian camel, and the wild Bactrian camel. At first, you may think these are two different forms of the same animal, but they actually diverged from each other around 1.1 million years ago. The wild Bactrian camels are listed as critically endangered, as there are thought to only be around a thousand left in the wild. One of their last remaining strongholds is Mongolia, but even here they are affected by climate change and poaching. The domesticated Bactrian camel is far more common, as there are thought to be around 1.5 to 2 million individuals on this planet today. The domesticated Bactrian camel is the camel we will be focusing on in this story, and our certain individual was found in Siberia in Russia. Bactrian camels are often treated quite poorly in captivity, and this is usually because they're viewed as circus animals, or animals for entertainment purposes only. This was definitely the case in this story, as the camel in question was living in a children's holiday camp. The camel was apparently pulling on its reins too strongly, and its handler decided to punch it in the face. The camel obviously didn't appreciate this and decided to retaliate. The camel bit and then trampled the 51-year-old trainer, and then the trainer was rushed to hospital. The doctors said it was impossible to save him and he later died from his injuries, and some might say that he got what he deserved. The Bactrian camel was known for being a very peaceful individual, but evidently he didn't put up with any disrespect. This just shows us that you shouldn't hurt or harass any captive animal, and this man definitely learnt that lesson the hard way. Of course, there are plenty of other stories that could have made it on this list, so if you know of any, let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.